We had more than 150 millimeters rain within two hours. One is too much water, flooding, mm -hmm. and the other is too little water, scarcity of water. Yeah. Climate is changing and there will be further change no matter how ambitious we are about mitigating it. It is a great pleasure for me to welcome you all here to the Rampel House for this uh, uh, exciting event. If you are going to proceed as we do and if the developing countries is going to have the same standard of living as we have, then we need three or four more of this earth. So this is the starting point. So uh, today we have a kind of two types of water. The water we drink and we use for all the purposes we have. And then we have wastewater, that the wastewater we discharge. I think in the future we will have to divide this more and treat water to come to the quality that is fit for purpose. And on the other hand, all the rainwater as well as treated wastewater we cannot just discard, we have to reuse it, recycle it into the hydrological cycle. So this uh, conference has actually been a little bit divided in two things, but that comes together. One is too much water, flooding, mm -hmm. and the other is too little water, scarcity water. Yeah. But uh, in fact, climate change induces both. The expected global mean temperature rise from the late uh, 19th century would be somewhere between 2 degrees centigrade and 7 degrees centigrade. And yes, you may ask, well, 2 degrees, that doesn't sound so horrible. But in global mean terms, it is. We can go back to 20,000 years and compare it to the past 10,000 years when we have a naturally relatively mild period on Earth. So the estimated difference in global mean temperature between one kilometer ice of Scandinavia and today's rather good conditions was about three degrees centigrade. Two degrees is not little. Seven degrees is huge. From your perspective, uh, are we doing enough in terms of uh, safeguarding against uh, the climate changes uh, in Europe? I think there has been a good start and there's more and more being done from considering climate change along other factors that are important when making decisions, starting to use the information available and um, sort of mainstreaming, as the word goes, climate change considerations into decisions. There's still more to do, of course. Um, we have only started and decisions are being made all the time. Yep. You get the feeling that there's been a lot of focus on the mitigation issues, especially until maybe the, the, the especially in, until Copenhagen in 2009. So is adaptation uh, moving into the center of focus now? It's also my impression, as you say, that uh, until only a few years ago, mitigation was the word of the day, and one almost felt like being bad on talking about adaptation. Right now, mitigation adaptation are seen as complementary measures, and one needs both. We can still mitigate, we can limit the size of climate change, but we cannot do future without also considering adaptation because climate is changing and there will be further change no matter how ambitious we are about mitigating it. Could you maybe elaborate on some of the impacts that you were talking about in your presentations that we see from climate change? Yeah, so I think the main uh, issues in cities are heat waves, uh, also because of the urban heat island effect, because if you have a lot of soil sealing in cities, you get increased uh, temperatures in cities, uh, both uh, during night and also during day. Uh, the issue of urban flooding is uh, increasing. You know, yourself, Copenhagen, uh, the event of last year, July, was a key example. And the issue of droughts uh, as well, which is mainly linked with agriculture, but that's the longer term issue with temperature increase and maybe reduced uh, uh, precipitation, reduced uh, availability of uh, water. So there is a need to um, look at the planning process in cities. Um, 
uh, maybe also already uh, trying to link climate change into existing plans which cities have to uh, uh, look at spatial planning uh, for new developments. Uh, I think the, the real challenge actually is the existing infrastructure, the existing um, assets in cities, houses, but also streets, uh, transport, etc., which will be quite difficult to, to uh, change. Um, but there are ways of doing that. Um, the other thing the report is uh, also mentioning is that there is uh, a, an increasing need to look across governance levels. Uh, cities are not on their own. You need to look at how cities can cooperate with uh, the national level or the maybe also uh, provinces, uh, but also how the EU can support cities in uh, ad adapting to climate change. First of all, what are some of the contexts that we're facing? Um, well, by 2050, according to uh, projections, there will be another 2.8 billion city dwellers. And in fact, we know with increasing urbanization, by that time we expect that about 70% of the total population will be based in cities. Now, the, the two challenges, well, a few challenges we face, but two of the challenges in terms of the people are ensuring uh, sufficient access to water supply and also wastewater treatment. And I know this is something that Ramble is working on, but is often forgotten in the discussions about environmental challenges. What policies do we need? Well, there's quite a few. <laughs> We've got a whole slew of them. I, guess so. I mean, one of the ones that I think is, is really critical, um, and, and we're looking particularly at water in the conference today, um, is that we need to do better in terms of water pricing and providing incentives for all water users to use water more efficiently. So that's, uh, for example, households were doing quite well at pricing, particularly here in Denmark. Um, but we also have to make sure that agricultural water users are actually paying the full cost of that water use. They're not subsidized. That, that leads to very inefficient use of water. We will of course uh, follow up on uh, this uh, success perhaps in a couple of years to see if uh, new uh, findings have been done uh, in the scientific uh, world and bring it uh, to our customers because that's what I think has been very fruitful. It is actually the number of various stakeholders which have participated in this conference. We have uh, governmental institutions, uh, utility companies, uh, municipalities, uh, uh, various uh, agencies responsible for emergencies have been here, insurance companies and uh, some of those uh, commercial companies working to uh, working on uh, preventing damages from uh, flood disasters.